I got selected as an astronaut in 1966 and uh, was here until 1976, and then we departed for New Braunfels, where we still live. And it was great memories of the nine missions that uh, went to the moon. I got to work on five of them. Uh, and I was in mission control as uh, Capcom for Apollo 10 and 11, backup crew on Apollo 13 and 17, and then got to fly to the moon uh, on Apollo 16. So I was on both sides of the operations at, at, uh, at NASA during those days, and it was really a, a, a thrilling job. I loved it very much, and uh, so it's good to be here and uh, get to meet some of the old guys and gals that uh, used to work uh, at NASA when uh, I was there. So it's just uh, a blessing to be here. My wife, uh, Dorothy, is uh, with us, and uh, I'd like her to uh, stand up and let me introduce you uh, to her. Uh, 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 I want to tell you the story of this marriage. Uh, it has made it 53 years uh, last, last month. So. Uh, uh, So, but when we were at NASA, there was another story about our marriage, which I'll get to later. Uh, I, as I said, it was exciting for me to uh, be here. I was a graduate of, uh, of the Naval Academy. You might wonder how uh, a Naval Academy midshipman can be a general in the Air Force. Well, back when I graduated, there wasn't any Air Force Academy, uh, so they would uh, allow 25% uh, of West Pointers and Annapolis midshipman to volunteer for the Air Force. And so I fell in love with airplanes at the Naval Academy, and so I had a choice, Naval Aviation or the Air Force. And, uh, and so I was torn about which to do, leaning Air Force, but wasn't sure. And so my senior year, I got a physical uh, by the Navy doctor there at the Academy. And he said, Midshipman Duke, you have astigmatism in your right eye and you don't qualify for naval aviation, but the Air Force will take you. So, uh, <laughs> I, all right. So I raised my hand and went into the Air Force. And, you know, that was uh, 60 years ago next June. Uh, and, uh, and I can't tell you how many physicals I've had in the last 60 years, especially when we were at NASA. And I still go to NASA for physicals every year. And uh, then I get them in you know, wherever. But I've had hundreds of physicals, and not once has anybody seen astigmatism in my right eye except that guy. <laughs> so I, I look back now and said, thank you, Lord, for the Air Force. So uh, it was a, a great career for me. Uh, I was a test pilot, a fighter pilot, got a master's degree in MIT in 1964. And there's where I met some of the astronauts uh, in the early 60s. Uh, I was working uh, uh, on the Apollo Guidance and Navigation System, which uh, MIT had the contract to, uh, to build. And so I was doing my thesis on this system, and I got to meet some astronauts. And the, uh, the third group and the second group, and they were so gung-ho and so enthusiastic and so excited. I said, man, that's a job I'd like to have. And I said, what do I do? He said, go to test pilot school. So I volunteered for test pilot school when I got my degree, moved to California and I, in Edwards Air Force Base, which is in the Mojave Desert, and it was fighter pilots heaven. i never seen so many wonderful airplanes I was going to get to fly. Well, my wife cried for three months because uh, Edwards is not the garden spot of America. Uh, it's in a high Mojave Desert. And uh, so it wasn't the greatest place to start raising a family. And, uh, but anyway, we survived that and then moved to Houston in April of 66 uh, when I was selected. And so uh, my memories of living here in El Lago were really, were really wonderful, but we were having some big problems uh, in those days. Uh, <laughs> but I'm getting a little ahead of myself. I want to uh, 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 first speak about uh, this... Uh, uh, this uh, Pledge of Allegiance that uh, we were led in this morning. Uh, and that focus on that phrase, one nation under God. Let's look at that phrase, one nation under God. If the nation is under God, our president's under God. 
Our Congress is under God. Our states are under God. All our city and state governments are under God. Our school systems under God. Our, ed- our colleges are under God. Our military is under God. And you and I are under God. Let me pose a question to you. Are you really under God? Have you really submitted your, God, your will to God? Do you seek God's direction? Do you seek His counsel? Do you honor God? And by your actions, do you reflect a godly life? And 45 years ago, when I was training for Apollo 16, if, if someone had asked me those questions that I just asked you and asked myself, if they'd asked me those questions in Apollo, which nobody did, but had they asked me those questions and I was honest with my answer, the answer would have been no. While I believed in God out there somewhere was God, Jesus was not Lord of my life. I was in charge of my life. I was the captain of my fate. I honored God in church, maybe an hour a Sunday. And I confessed Jesus, but I really wasn't a Christian. I was somebody who went to church. I was a churchian. I was in charge of my life. And I was doing a pretty good job at it. So while I honored God, I was uh, with my lips. I really wasn't a believer. What I was really doing was preparing for my flight. And it was a, you know, 60, 70-hour job uh, per week. And I had volunteered to, for this job because I love adventure and I love to explore. And most of us as fighter pilots and test pilots, that's a type A personality, and that's what we wanted to do. I did not join for fame or fortune. Fame is fleeting. Uh, The only time I was ever on television, I had my spacesuit on, so I don't get on airplanes and people sit down next to me and say, I know you, you walked on the moon. It never happened. Uh, If I, like I say, get get on the plane in my spacesuit, they might say, I what do you got that on for, you know? And, and I might confess who I am. I don't wear a sign around, hey, I went to the moon. So I never get recognized. I, so fame is fleeting. Uh, fortune, uh, we did not make a million bucks uh, for going to the moon like uh, National Enquirer said. I was a lieutenant colonel, and I got paid like every other lieutenant colonel. But if you uh, work for NASA or you work for uh, the military and maybe even your company, when you go on a trip, uh, it's temporary duty. Uh, So in uh, the military and NASA, they were very rigorous. So you filled out a travel voucher. (laughs) And I did, literally, it's a true story. And and it was uh, Houston, uh, Kennedy... Kennedy Moon, Moon Pacific, Pacific Houston. And, uh, and uh, the moon flight was 11 days, so back then the per diem rate was $25 a day. Well, <laughs> 275 bucks, you know, better than nothing. So when I got my check uh, on, the, on the voucher, it said government quarters and meals were furnished, so they deducted that part. And then, so, well, how about a nickel a mile? Uh, well, uh, we furnished the transportation. So uh, NASA uh, so, sent me a check for $13.75, which I immediately cashed. Uh, and uh, so that was my fortune. 